Today I'm going to talk about um, the slow carbon cycle. This is for the OCR A-level geography spec where you need to know about carbon cycling between the land, ocean and atmosphere. Um, we're going to look at the fast carbon cycle uh, later on but we're going to start with the slow carbon cycle. So here's a basic picture of the atmosphere and the ocean and this is where our slow carbon cycle begins. Um, the process of diffusion so that is where carbon is being exchanged between the atmosphere and the ocean occurs. And so we get carbon being diffused from the atmosphere into the surface ocean. Once we have this carbon diffusing from the atmosphere into the surface ocean, it dissolves into the ocean. And then that carbon, that dissolved carbon, is used um, by marine organisms such as kind of uh, clams, uh, corals, and what they actually do, um, they fix that, that carbon and they mix it with calcium to create their shells and, and skeletons. So it's fundamental for their existence. Um, they are using the carbon to um, create what we call calcium carbonate shells. Um, and so this is where the carbon is, is, is going to next. However, those um, phytoplankton, those clams, those coral, they don't last forever, so they eventually will die. And, and the remains of um, that kind of, those calcium carbonate shells and skeletons that they formed, well, they kind of sink to the bottom. And then what happens after that is over thousands of millions of years, the, the kind of all these tiny bits of remains, or this or this calcium carbonate will just start to accumulate on the bottom. It starts to accumulate over thousands of millions of years in these marine deposits. And then with enough uh, deposits piling on top of each other, that put, creates pressure on the, on the lower layers. And with heat and pressure, it converts these unconsolidated marine deposits into sedimentary rocks. So this is a process that takes a long, long time. We're talking you know, millions of years to convert it from uh, you know, carbon in the atmosphere into the, into the rock. And once they're actually in the rock, in the bottom of the ocean, they can be trapped there for, you know, 150 million years. That's what we call the residency time. However, the carbon doesn't just stay there. So here we can see is a destructive plate boundary. So some of the rocks that have been formed um, at the bottom of the ocean, those sedimentary rocks, they're actually moved. So they're moved by plate movements. Um, and some of those rocks will actually be subducted um, into uh, the mantle. When rocks are sub, um, subducted and heat applied to them and the friction, they will become melted, which is transforming those rocks. And in that kind of process of transforming them, any carbon that's stored in the rocks is actually re released as carbon dioxide when those volcanoes erupt. So the carbon that was in rock gets converted back into a gas and then released back into the atmosphere. That's not the only way that carbon gets back into the atmosphere involving sedimentary rocks though, uh, because we also get some of the carbon rocks actually being ejected during um, the eruptions. They're converted into kind of silica, um, silicate minerals and they get actually uh, ejected out of the, uh, the rock, uh, out of the volcano. Um, and also plate movements push up the rock from the seabed. Um, uh, those plate movements, so we've, we've got here a mountain range that's been created by these two plates moving together and they once would have been on the bottom of the ocean. And so we're getting rocks that are exposed. And once the rocks, whether it's from the eruption or from the plate movement, once those rocks are exposed, they are can then be attacked by chemical weathering. So we know that when carbon dioxide um, uh, mixes with rainwater, it, it forms this weak carbonic acid and they will be able to chemically weather these rocks that have been exposed. That, again, releases more carbon. So in that process of the chemical weathering attacking those sedimentary rocks, some of that carbon is released as carbon dioxide back into the atmosphere. But obviously, in the process of breaking down those rocks in situ, some of the carbon um, dissolves, uh, ends up in streams, and eventually, over a long period of time, um, some of that carbon will actually make its way back into the ocean. And this process of 
carbon in the surface ocean being converted into uh, calcium carbonate shells and then into marine deposits it starts to happen again. This is called the slow carbon cycle because, as we said, it takes millions of years to, to occur. Here's a kind of uh, brief um, summary in a picture form of that kind of, as it says, ultra long term. This is taking millions of years. It takes up to 200 million years to move between those um, four stores. So from the ocean into the rocks and then back out into the atmosphere and then kind of around again. That slow carbon cycle can take 100 to 200 million years. The amount of carbon actually being cycled between these in the slow carbon cycle is 10 to 100 million um, tonnes. So it's not as much as the fast cycle, which we're going to look at. It's quite significantly less. And for context, you know, in 2019, um, human emissions of just taking fossil fuels and burning them and we released 43 billion tonnes into the atmosphere. So we can see that the slow carbon cycle isn't um, adding as much carbon, but it's still a really important process that we need to understand of how carbon is cycled between the stores on Earth.